everybody. It's manifesting with the Mer Goddess Tuesday. Ooh, and we got our waves going on. Yeah, so you made waves <laughs> this weekend in Bridgewater, eh? I did. It was um, we got, we so got, amazing. We got to move the thing. You're, you're, we're cutting off oh, your Oh, right eyes. here? There you go. Okay, okay. I'm right here. I'm right here. Um, yeah, so I swam my fastest times ever, and it was pretty amazing. And what's really cool is that one of my races, the 400 free, converts to me being number two in the U.S. for my division in the para- para Americans. So out of the USA Americans, my 400 free time converts to number two. So that's really exciting. Wow. And you're, you're creeping up again. Oh, okay. Sorry. I got to hold it down here. <laughs> oh, you're, hold, you're <laughs> like, holding the phone? <laughs> I'm holding my iPad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll have a little stand here. I, I'm in a, I manifested a new place to do the live. So I'm I'm embracing gotcha. uh, what's happening. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I just want I'm, I'm going to keep catching you so I don't end up like okay. talk, talking to your sternum. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Sarah's belly button, tell me about the race. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> May have still some water in it. You may yeah. get some bubbles. <laughs> All right. Now, now we know it's an any. Right. Exactly. We know it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, what was I, I had a question for you mm -hmm. about that. So and, and it has to do with like you talk a lot about, you know, just like being mindful and being in the moment and letting go and just kind of, you know, doing your best, following your plan as if there isn't this thing going on. Right. As if there isn't pressure, as if there are. And, you, and I think you wrote in your blog post, right, regardless of what my com competition was doing, I was going to like write. Like focus yeah, on like my, I, my inner world. And my question yeah. is, so as as someone who races on foot, like I always do better in races. I can always go faster in a race than I can in a training. And mm. and I'm wondering, like, what's what's that about? If I'm just focusing internally, like what what is it that's getting through? And I'm wondering if you if you have the same thing, like there is something about the race that even though you're you're focused internally that there's something about the comp the competition and the event that uh, that allows you to do your best so i will say that um my body has been experiencing like a belief and confidence that i have no doubt in my mind that i i will do well and so that's what happened in the freestyle races is like I've been training really well in the freestyle races. I've been seeing my practices like my times go down in practice for those events. So there was no doubt in my mind that, you know, I was going to do well. But the other strokes I have, there's a little bit of confidence that I have in practice but I haven't actually been able to manifest that into the races. So like what you're saying, like where, you know, you feel good in practice and then when it comes to a race, you're like, Oh my gosh, like there's like this fear that's coming up. Right. And so this is actually something that I'm working with, with the other strokes. So, you know, the hundred butterfly, um, if you've ever seen anyone do the butterfly, it's probably the one of the hardest strokes. Um, it has been like one of my best strokes, but my my coach has been changing my stroke. Therefore, like, for instance, when you're running, right, the coach changes your stride or you've been learning about Chia running and all these things. And then like now there's like this doubt that you like aren't going to do your best because you have this like, you know, thing. So that's kind of what well, happened. It's, it's, yeah, it's almost and like I, there's there's a part of my brain that is back to beginner mode is. Right? Yeah, that's like, what's happening with my other strokes right now is that like I like there like before I stepped up on the block. I, there was some fear and I like didn't believe that I would do well. And so like I didn't do my best. Like maybe I swam like a second faster than a couple weeks ago, but I embodied that fear. Like I could feel that fear was in me. 
And I allowed it to carry those two races. Like, so there were four, I did six races. Four of them were freestyle, which I was confident that I would knock them out of the park. But then the other ones, I wasn't confident. And so what I'm working on now to get me there is to like really establish the belief in practice so that there's no doubt in my mind that when I go to the race, that I'm confident that I can do it. So that's kind of how I got with my other stroke, how I'm like, oh, you know, this is like, this is good. Like, I don't even like think about it. Like, I was like, oh, I'm going to get like a best time. I didn't know what time I would get. I didn't know I was going to like crush it by a long streak, you know, <laughs> but I, I was afraid in the other ones. And so I created that fear into not getting the best time, choking on water, you know, all the things that like you become afraid of, like right before a race, like I created all of that. And I knew that I did. And so like, I was just, and my coach was like, well, like he wrote me an email the next day and was like, how can we establish the eye of the tiger in practice and in the race for every stroke? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's what I'm even looking at, you know? One thing that comes to me is that there's a difference between acknowledging that you're not up to where you want to be, right? So, okay, so Mm -hmm. the coach changed your stroke. So there is, when when you do some, when you learn something, I just did a podcast interview with a friend of mine, Sean D'Souza, and that'll be up in in a month or so. And he points out that when you learn something, you actually get worse at it. Right. Le- yeah. Learning is not about improvement. Learning is about going backwards. Right. Exactly. And so to say, OK, so here I am on the starting block. Uh, is that what you call it? I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the starting block. OK. Take uh, your mark. Go. <laughs> okay. So uh, same as for runners. So you're, on, you're on your starting block and and you are acknowledging that I am in a learning phase here. So my time isn't going to be what it was because I'm pulling backwards, you know, I'm taking a backward step so that I can break through something. Can you experience that realistic assessment without adding fear? Well, yeah, that's where like, so that's where I'm at right now is that like, I was able to acknowledge that I had the fear. But usually, like, I try to, like, push the fear away or, like, feel like it's, like, a bad thing. But, like, I just accepted that I was just going to embrace and experience the fear and, like, what would it create? And so be having that experience, like, it just showed me that, you know, like, okay, it was okay to have fear. Like, I'm learning something new. I can choke on water. I can, I mean, and the stroke looked good. (laughs) So that was like a plus that it like looked better than it ever had before. But, you know, that like not belief or that like feeling just uh, just created this like, like little like scared little child within me that like didn't have the confidence to like go all out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I and I want to I want to tie this in to you know sick to fit and to yeah. to people trying to change how they eat, right? So when we okay, I've just you know seen Game Changers or watched Forks Over Knives or went to a lecture or attended a potluck, and now I've got to change my stroke, right? Essentially, like you know you. Or mer goddess, you have been swimming since before you could walk. So you, mm-hmm. you have, if not an, a, a, an ego attachment to how you do, like you're a pretty good swimmer. Like, so for you, yeah. for you to say, I am swimming suboptimally at this stage in your career. First of all, it takes a huge amount of ego strength to, to slice off that piece, right? To say, yeah. I will still be okay by acknowledging that I can do things better. And, mm-hmm. and then in the moment to feel that fear of, OK, so I've been feeding myself my entire life. It feels like I've been doing it successfully. You know, the world or my coach or my biometrics is telling me, well, maybe you've got high blood pressure or high cholesterol or your blood glucose numbers don't look good. So maybe there's room for improvement there. And mm-hmm. the fear 
of like, what if I screw this up or I don't know how to do this or I I just uh, I'm so much more comfortable in my comfort zone. I'm so much more comfortable in my competence that being feeling less competent is an unbearable feeling. Mm hmm. Yeah. But I mean, like, what if, you know, we could be comfortable with being uncomfortable and understanding that by being uncomfortable in like without the the I mean, being comfortable in the uncomfortable, like there is so much growth that's happening just by being OK with that. Like then it's like our journeys can like skyrocket like today. Like, for instance, you know, I was in practice. I have shoulder. Um, I'm you know, I've been training really hard. So my shoulder is like, you know, kind of bothering me because I had to go right into a race from not had to, but wanted to. It was a good idea. Right. To go from a race into training. And so, you know, the, instead of like like not doing it or whatever, I broke it down and was like, okay, my coach was like, we're going to do pain management where we're just using one arm. So that being said to somebody that is, you know, trying to go from not being high blood pressure to lower blood pressure, or they want to switch to a plant-based diet, you know, like just by taking that dairy out, or just by, you know, doing those little things and being okay with like, maybe I'm not where I want to be. Like, I don't want to feel, you know, pain in my shoulder, but like, that's just what's happening. And to, ex and to just be okay with like, this is part of my journey and this is something I can learn from. I can now like, embrace that and like go into the next moment of like oh my gosh like huh now I know that I can swim like 15 seconds with my left arm you know I wouldn't have known that if my shoulder didn't hurt you know so like mm -hmm. there's these so many like like missing pieces that we never get if we're always looking for the outcome versus like looking for where we can learn in those uncomfortable moments yeah, I think I'm getting more and more clear that the key to success is some sort of ratio. And we talked about that, like 85.5 percent ratio. of. And so, like, I just podcasted a couple of weeks ago, Wendy Wood, who's like the world's expert on habit formation. And her big thing is it's the environment that determines what you do. So you want to set up mm. an environment that makes it drop dead easy for you to do the things you want to do and you know, remove any friction from positive habits and create lots of friction for negative habits. And that's great as far as it goes. But there's always going to be times when you can't sort of carpet the world and you have to bring your own willpower with you. And I think like that, those are the moments for learning. Like I just mm -hmm. um, like what? Um, it's got a testimonial from someone who attended our sick to fit retreat. So like his big thing is every day he makes a tofu scramble in the morning and hmm. he's like practicing. And so at first that's you know like, oh, that's a learning. OK, so now I've got to, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. I have, how do I heat up the vegetables so they don't burn without oil? What kind of tofu do I get? There was like a whole bunch of changing his strokes. Right. So, you know, when he eats his regular breakfast, he's good at it. It's easy. But like, OK, so here's a small amount of learning, a little bit of discomfort that he could repeat. And every time he makes scrambled tofu, it gets easier and easier until the day that it becomes his regular routine. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now that's set and we just leave it alone. And when we're ready, we now wade back into what's the next bit of learning? What is the next place that I can become uncomfortable? Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it's just like, but the, the more like what I'm learning is the more that I can just like be OK with being uncomfortable. Like even, for instance, yesterday, you know, I was like I found myself just like walking home from the pool, like in tears because I'm cold. It's rainy, like I'm uncomfortable. And these people are driving by with their warm cars and their windshield wipers, you know, and I'm getting wet and They're all these like things. And it's you. like, yeah. And, it, and I'm like, but you know what? Like, how amazing that I get to like experience 
walking and being uncomfortable from a pool for my second workout, like at night, you know, and I just like found myself like training myself, like just like that guy that wanted the tofu in the morning. Like this is like me constantly telling myself like, it's okay. Like, this is what I wanted. This is the journey that I have chosen to be mer goddess so that I can keep being okay with the discomfort, you know? And it was just like, and, and just all these, you know, moments of, um, when people just never get past that, right. They never want to get past that comfort and then they never know what's on the other side of like this amazing lesson that they get to learn from that. Right. And uh, going back to um, one of my old podcast guests, Mark Schoen, who wrote a book, Your Survival Instinct is Killing You, is when we never cross over into discomfort, not only do we, we don't actually stay comfortable for two reasons. One is our comfortable habits are killing us. Right. The, the, the food we eat and, and the TV and the Internet we're watching and the sedentarism. Right. All that mm -hmm. comfort is not good for us. But also the more we stay in our comfort zone, the more we fear going out of it and the more narrow that comfort zone becomes. So now all of a sudden it's not, you know, temperature between 60 and 80. It's between 68 and 72. It's between, mm -hmm. you know, humidity, 37.8 to 54.2 like and it keeps the more we stay in it, the more we fear what would it be like on the out on the outside of it? Yeah, totally. And I mean, like, but that's what like, but if I'm looking at myself, like I'm looking at myself now from then, right? Like, I wish I would have known what I would have known now back then, because I may have like expedited my journey way quicker, you know, by just like, because I like sat in those moments of like, I don't want to like change and I don't want to be uncomfortable. Right. And like, and it was funny, like the other day, I literally like, like my sock just like disappeared and I had to walk home with um, one sock and literally the sock appeared when I got home, but it like taught me that like I can be comfortable and uncomfortable at the same time and it's all going to be good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. And I think it's, it's a very interesting balance between, you know, and I think it might be an individual thing. Um, I'm not sure about this, but someone like you or people like, like David Goggins, who um, utterly embraced discomfort as kind of the only you know, like going going way like 100 percent to that side, like only when he's uncomfortable, does he feel like he's paying his rent on this planet? Right. That any kind of comfort <laughs> is is, we is weakness and wasted time. And most people are on the complete other end, like whenever like whenever I'm uncomfortable, it's if this shouldn't be happening and and where where each of us can get to like somewhere in there, I think serves each of us best. And maybe there's not one right way to, way to be, but based on yourself and your personality and your goals, each of us can find that how much discomfort versus how much comfort. And, and, and it's hilarious that you mentioned socks, because I was just reading <laughs> yesterday, um, like arguably the the one of the greatest coaches of sports of all time was UCLA's John Wooden. Um, his teams won more national titles than anybody else, like by, by a factor of two and a half. Like, I think he won like 10 titles, national titles in 12 years. And he never, hmm. ever talked about winning. Right. He talked about doing your best, focusing on the fundamentals. And every year his his basketball team would come and they'd sit down for the very first practice and he would teach them how to put on their socks and tie their sneakers. Hmm. Right. As if to say, and he would say, you know what, if you don't do this right, if you're a little sloppy about this, you're going to get a blister and then nothing that I teach you is going to matter. So, what, <laughs> but it was also like teaching people like focus on the fundamentals. And so at the same time, like the sock, like you make sure like you pull it out, you make sure there's no wrinkles in it, you pull it up to the right place. And that is comfort. But it's also imagine these like the best basketball players in the world having to sit there and have this like, you know, 75 year old white guy <laughs> tell them that this that this is they have to put on their socks in order to be great. Like there's a lot of discomfort that has to come from. Placing yourself 
under the tutelage of that. You know, it's a very sort mm -hmm. of like, you know, Zen monastery humility story. Yeah. But then, you know, to just to be able to do that and understand the purpose of that and learn something from it, then it's like, whoo, like, I'm so glad that I got to experience that, you know, and it's like the more like I'm just learning that, like, you know, the more discomfort that I can embrace, the more things I can learn and I can just, you know, I mean, it, I'm just going to be better as a person, as an athlete, as a, a human being that's going to help people understand this on, on the planet, you know, cause we're all like, we, we're ready for a change and it's best that we can look up to people that can, you know, like embrace this discomfort and understand that it's okay. Like we get to be discomfortable and comfortable and everything is all good all the time. <laughs> right. And, and, and the irony is that the discomfort in practice creates comfort in the event. <laughs> Right. This, this feeling like, OK, I've got to I've got to learn. I've got to relearn how to put on my socks and shoes like a frigging three year old makes me more comfortable in basketball. And you struggling with a stroke, refining it makes you a more efficient, comfortable swimmer. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, Elizabeth has a question. Do 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 we set up our personal environment? Do you set up a personal environment of some sort when you are in an environment you can't control? So kind of having your own mm. little, <laughs> little bubble bubble of, of protection over your habits. Well, I would say um, it's not that I would necessarily like change my environment, but more of learn from my environment and be able to see what's happening and choose, you know, what it is that I want to take from that and and learn from it. You know what I mean? No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I caught you. <laughs> caught me. You, you didn't know what you meant uh, either. <laughs> I didn't. Well, no, because I was trying to think of like, I was trying to think of when I was in the race this weekend and, you know, like I, again, it was uncomfortable stepping up on the block to do the butterfly, but there was a focus of, okay, I'm going to breathe every three strokes. So that being said, like whatever was happening, even if I was afraid or whatever, I was still there to choose one focus and focus on that. So basically going back to, you know, your environment, like what is one thing that you can focus on that can allow you to learn from that experience? Hmm. So it's almost like, OK, so I'm in an environment that I can't control and I only notice that I, we can't control anything. Right. So so, yeah. so when, we say, <laughs> when we say we're in an environment we can't control, we mean that other people are controlling it for us, that their agendas are superimposed on our own and that something in that environment is making it difficult for us to behave in the way we want to behave. Right. So like mm -hmm. the staff room and they always have Krispy Kremes. So I can't just go and drop the Krispy Kremes in the garbage or tell everybody not to bring Krispy Kremes in. So when you think we talk, talk about learning, say, OK, so the Krispy Kremes are my teacher in this environment. Right. So they're they're the thing that I need to think about. And, you know, so I, I I'm a prepper, so I like to carry like, you know, duct tape with me and a Swiss Army knife and dental floss and, <laughs> and paracord. And I, I just feel good having like, you know, I've never, ever been in a position where I was like, gee, I wish I didn't have duct tape on me or boy, I'm so glad I don't have, <laughs> I don't have duct tape. Like, you know, OK, so, uh, you know, every so often it comes in handy. Um, yeah. <laughs> But and so so like I joined a gym and I go to the gym and they, you know, they have like Larry and Lenny cookies and, and muscle milk and all sorts of, you know, stuff I don't want to eat. So I either so I, you know, I bought a gym bag and I pack my gym bag exactly the way I want it so I can walk in and have a it's essentially a micro environment to help me manage the macro environment. But I also want to be in unfriendly environments just 
like for learning, just as, mm -hmm. you know, that discomfort of, I'm okay, I'm in a room, everyone else is eating Krispy Kreme. It's the natural, normal thing to do. It almost feels obligatory. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to work on my not eat Krispy Kreme muscle today. Uh, but we, you know, we can't live like that 24 seven. So we want to make sure that, you know, again, back to Wendy Wood, as much as possible, let's create environments that support our good habits and, mm -hmm. and chew, you know, and, and focus on, so like, you know, your discomfort at being in training for very high level swimming and, for, and my training as an ultra runner are both discomfort practice that translate really well into the everyday world of, of donuts. Mm hmm. Yeah. Because I mean, if you're if you haven't trained that muscle and you see a donut there, you're going to just naturally, oh, I'm hungry. It's cat. I burn these calories. You're going to have all these excuses as to why you can eat that Krispy Kreme. Right. Yeah. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be in a 24 seven Krispy Kreme world. No. I mean, first of all, you just don't want to be <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> part of life is just to enjoy no, ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> all right. But, but um, again, I think it comes to, it comes down to some sort of, of balance, some sort of ratio that works for you. And I think the ratio differs from person to person. It also differs for each of us at different points on our journey. Like mm -hmm. there's times where I feel very vulnerable. Like I'm I'm tired or sad or something has happened or I'm I'm in an unstable phase of a, of an important relationship and moments like that there's already tons of of learning tons of things being churned up so I want to make sure that I have good habits that I just can fall back on and that I have an environment that supports those good habits other times I'm feeling stronger in myself I can venture farther out into you know the the woods. Exactly. Into the, the jungle, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where you gather your bananas. <laughs> yeah, totally. Awesome. All right. Is that good for today? That's great. Cool. I just I just want to uh, quickly mention to folks that the uh, New Orleans retreat that Josh and I are running is March 5th through 8th, and we got some spots available. And if people want to find out more, our, the website is sick to fit. That's the number two, sick to fit and slash NOLA, N-O-L-A, all lowercase, which is New Orleans, Louisiana. We just um, we just started collecting testimonials from the first retreat. And uh, so we got to get you down to one of these as soon as soon as we uh, we figure out the system well enough to actually make a profit. We'll, nice. We'll invite, yeah. Then about we'll... You and the captain. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. We'll have lots of by then it'll be so much we can teach everyone, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll, we'll have one like in, you know, we're, we're in Florida, you can like teach people how to swim to Cuba and stuff. Yeah, or even on an island, right? We could go to Haiti or something. <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> it's, it's Sounds not, good. The it's, possibilities are endless. We don't know. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth says Griffin of Observatory Retreat, West Coast. Yes, West Coast. I, I we got to go back out there. Cause All right, the bomb. well, this is manifesting with the Mer Goddess, so yes, we're gonna manifest whatever we want. <laughs> awesome. All uh, right, thanks a lot. Thank you, okay. Sarah. Thank we're you. waving on out. <laughs> Thank you, Ron and Elizabeth, for uh, thank you. Out. Catch everybody later. Bye. Bye.